Archie Rock Book Show in gorgeous Times Square. Isn't this nice? Lovely, lovely. Yeah. Great day. Yeah, this is Mike Streisgut. He is the author of this amazing new book called Outlaw. Waylon, Willie, Chris, and the Renegades of Nashville. Yes. Congratulations. Thanks so much. It's great to have it out. Yeah, well, it, it is so well written, Mike. I really like your style. What drew you to this material and this particular uh, period in time? Well, I've written a lot about Johnny Cash and have been very interested in the past in Cash's late 60s career, early 70s career. It's just after he did the, 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 the prison concerts at, 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 uh, at Folsom Prison and, and San Quentin. So I've always been interested in this area. But it, it really was the, the, the movie Crazy Heart a few years ago with Jeff Bridges. And I thought to myself, gee, this is Waylon Jennings. Jeff Bridges is Waylon Jennings. Now, other people said it was Chris Christopherson, but to me it was Waylon Jennings. And I thought, you know, it's, it's almost 10 years now since he passed away, and I feel like you know, people just aren't remembering Waylon Jennings. And so I, I, I got into Jennings, and then Jennings opened up the, the outlaw topic to me. So along with Willie and Christopherson and... David Allen Coe. These were major names in 1970s uh, country and rock music. Well, the, the, the other story I discovered was that Nashville was this really vibrant place in the late 60s and early 70s. And we often dismiss Nashville as kind of a, a, a backwater during that time. There, there were a lot of stereotypes that really weren't warranted. And it, 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 it was very satisfying to me to talk about this, this kind of Greenwich Village scene in Nashville's West End neighborhood uh, where young songwriters, uh, uh, young political activists, musicians were, were gathering and creating this ferment in the city that we don't always associate with ferment. Yeah, you know, that really struck me actually as I was reading and I began to wonder, could this outlaw in music have happened without the outlaw in Nashville? You know, that's a, that's a very good question. I think the, the, the industry needed uh, people out front. And they were people who didn't mind you know, dressing the part, particularly Waylon and Willie. By the 70s, you know, they're, they're dressing in the leather vests and the blue jeans and the gambler's hats. And they kind of look like Western outlaws. And, and the, the, the fashion was, was very much key to the marketing of, of the music. So I, I, I think we would have maybe known this ferment as something else without the outlaws. But, but I, I do think these young songwriters like uh, Rodney Crowell and Guy Clark and Tony Joe White, um, these, these uh, uh, perhaps lesser known figures, but nonetheless very influential figures, were, were outlaws as well. Well, let's talk about the three outlaws because it seems like all roads lead to Willie and Willie was the first. What made him the first outlaw? Well, Willie came to Nashville in 1960, and he immediately fell in with the songwriting community and wrote some big hits that are considered classics today, like Crazy and uh, Funny How Time Slips Away. And, but, but Willie, as a recording artist, never really was, was clicking. And he was very frustrated because he was part of the Nashville machine. It was like a studio system in Hollywood where you were signed and then um, you were told what songs to record. You were told how to record them. And, and he, he, he bucked against that. And uh, it, it was actually Waylon who first bucked against it, but, but Willie quickly followed suit. And Willie is famous for recording music, making music according to his own vision. And, and I think that's a, that's a very outlaw kind of characteristic. And in fact, just as the, the, the outlaw Waylon and Willie thing was going full steam in 1977, 1978, uh, he goes to his record company, Columbia Records, and says, you know, I want to make an album of standards. Stardust, songs like that. And the, the, the label chief says, what? No, give me more Waylon and Willie. But Waylon did what was in his heart. I mean, I'm sorry, Willie did what was in his heart. He did what was in his, his vision for his own career. And, and that's a very outlaw kind of characteristic. So um, Willie has continued along on this, 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 this steady road and I think is really the, perhaps the most significant uh, legacy of, of the outlaw movement. Um, he continues to be the person who's the heart and soul, the symbol of country music. And he, he, he kind of ties together those moments when country music uh, really shines. You know, country music every once in a while does marry tradition and the present, and it's always a beautiful thing when that happens, but it doesn't happen a lot. But Willie's there to kind of uh, take us over the, the rough patches. 
And of course, Chris is a huge fan of Willie's. And then Willie recorded that album of Chris Christopherson songs later on. Yes, he did. And, and I think that was uh, what an affirmation for of, of Chris Christopherson's uh, artistic uh, um, abilities uh, to have Willie kind of come full circle and, and take a look at his friend's music. And I think the great thing about Chris Christopherson and, and interviewing him for this book, he's almost like a child when he talks about how um, artists and filmmakers and uh, record uh, uh, people have uh, shown him, given him attention and taken him to another level. He, he was very appreciative appreciative of those kinds of gestures. He's um, one of my favorites and as many of you know, <sighs> kind of have a minor crush on Chris Christopherson, so I'm very jealous of your time with him. Um, it was interesting to me too, you brought up Hazel Smith. I, I had forgotten this story and I hope you'll tell it, of, of the word outlaw and what Hazel Smith's connection to that was. Well, Hazel Smith was working for the Glazer Studios in Nashville. And Glazer Studios is where Waylon did a lot of his recording. Um, some of his best known albums were, were recorded there. And the, the, the Glazer brothers um, actually also had a, a booking agency. And so Waylon and some of the other artists were, were touring together. And uh, uh, Hazel Smith was working in the office and a, a radio disc jockey asked her, well, what do you call these guys? And she picked up her dictionary and she looked for a few words and she saw the word maverick and she said, no, not maverick. And then she saw outlaw, uh, one who lives outside the written law. And, and, and so, so she got back to this disc jockey and said, well, they're outlaws. And so Hazel has kind of claimed the origin of, of that term, at least as it's applied to these, these men uh, for a long time. Now, the word outlaw was kind of associated with these guys uh, before that and around that time, so it's hard to know exactly where it came from. Uh, Waylon, for example, had recorded the song uh, Ladies Love Outlaws, and that was in the early 1970s. And uh, Dave Hickey, who at the time was a well-known country music journalist, um, wrote an article called In Defense of the Telecaster Outlaws. So outlaw was kind of uh, uh, everywhere. The term was everywhere, but it, it, it was really hazel. Uh, and then, of course, the album wanted the outlaws that RCA uh, released in 1976 that established this, this movement and this marketing label, if you will. And it's interesting that we're seeing that come back around again now with Jamie Johnson and Eric Church. Do you think they can lay claim to the outlaw term? I, I think they can. I mean, I think that these are uh, particularly somebody like Zach Brown or, or Jamie Johnson who they're, they're not necessarily conforming to any formula in Nashville right now. They're, they're recording as, as, as they choose to record. Uh, which, which is um, still all these years later, is uh, somewhat unusual in, in, in country music. Country music likes its formulas. Uh, so, so yes, th those folks uh, I think certainly are working in the outlaw tradition. And I think they're also, they would tell you, are great fans of these original outlaws. It's interesting too though, isn't it, that even though they're outlaws, they're still trying to make inroads into this system. And there, there still is a formula to it. I mean, recently there was an article with Eric Church and Billboard and he was talking about the song that he wrote because he knew what the formula would be to make it a hit. <laughs> and but So it's fascinating that they're still trying to be who they are, but work in this system. Sure, and of course, Waylon, uh, Willie Nelson has always called Nashville the store. Nashville is the store. That's where you go to have to to, to, to sell your music, and uh, he he recognizes that there's a formula. He's tried to resist it, but but all of these these men, even Chris Christopherson, when he came to Nashville, uh, he wrote in this rambling Bob Dylan style that was not really accepted in Nashville and he tried to temper his verse and tried to package what he was doing uh, in a, in a, in a, according to the way Nashville liked music but finally uh, he was able to throw that aside and, and write according to his heart according to his, his vision and a, a person who deserves a lot of credit for that is, is Fred Foster who was um, the owner of Monument Records, which finally uh, signed Chris Christopherson in the late 1960s and gave him a stage. And he allowed um, Chris Christopherson to do what he wanted. He says, you got to let a flower be a flower. And fortunately, there were some maverick producers in Nashville. Jack Clement is one who allowed that to happen. Now, you mentioned earlier there were some great supporting characters in the book as well, some amazing musicians and producers. Do you have a favorite story? Well, one of my favorite stories is the story of Rodney Crowell. Uh, Rodney Crowell comes to Nashville. Uh, he writes some, uh, uh, some songs that are considered standards today. He later marries Roseanne Cash. 
Um, he began writing in the early in the early 70s. And he had just jumped in his car from Houston, he, again a, a Texan. Most of these guys are Texans, uh, and drove up to Nashville. And it, it's a it's one of the famous hungry artist stories of of Nashville. He he slept in his car. He he bathed in lakes around town during the during the summer. And uh, he, he took a job at, at TGI Fridays, and um, he would he would drink the unfinished uh, drinks of, of customers. Uh, and Rodney finally meets Emmy Lou Harris, and he's also signed to a publishing company that's owned by Chet Atkins. So things start to happen for him, and it's just lovely to see how he he blossomed in the 70s. And some of his work was picked up by Waylon and Willie in the late 70s, and. It, it, that really became the link between that underground songwriting scene and the bigger stars of the outlaw movement who were Waylon and Willie and Christofferson. So. Well, let's play a little game. I'm going to ask you for a one word answer to describe each of the outlaws. Willie. A poet. Waylon. A rebel. Christofferson. An innovator. <laughs> I won't say mine. <laughs> How about? Mike Streiska. A, a, a journalist. <laughs> now, you're also a documentary filmmaker. Does that inform your writing at all or vice versa? Well, it, it does. I mean, in that I, I think I try to bring the, uh, a, a visual component to my writing. Um, it was important, and I'm very glad that It Books, the, the, the publisher of, of, of Outlaw, worked with me. It was very important for me to have the photographs um, interspersed uh, in the narrative because I think they, they, it helps tell the story rather than putting them in, the, you know, in a centerfold, as, 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 as many books do. So, uh, absolutely, I'm, I'm, I'm always thinking about... Um, the visuals, how something looks, and wanting to try to communicate that to a reader. Whether I'm successful or not at that, it's up to the reader to decide. Well, as the reader, I will tell you, you were very successful. It's a great book. Love the style of it. Thanks for playing along, being a good sport.